How you doing, Anna? Good, and yourself? I'm doing pretty good. We got a good video for people today, don't we? Yeah, we do. So what are we going to talk about? Uh, I'm not sure, actually. It, <laughs> well, <laughs> you don't know. I do know. Today's <laughs> video, we're going to talk about Angelina Jolie's new movie that's out on HBO Max. Or you can risk your life at the movie theater to see Those Who Wish Me Dead. And if you go to the <laughs> theater, they might wish you dead. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, we love the movie theater. We recently went, but we'll share that on another occasion. Welcome back, everybody. So, Anna, what were your thoughts about the movie Those Who Wish Me Dead? Before you seen the movie, did the preview match your expectations of the movie? No. No. I was disappointed. You were disappointed in the movie? I'm disappointed in everything. Really? <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, I was gonna say because you seem like you, you had your moments like oh oh. I didn't say none of that. Your eyes cheered up a couple of times. He lied. I seen some watery <laughs> eyes. But how did you like the movie overall? Just the name by itself, "Those Who Wish Me Dead." I'm thinking like, is this guy like some alien kid? Is he from a foreign country? Like, what's the deal with this kid that they want him dead? Right. So I thought he had like some type of alien power. Uh, because you have these government agents chasing after this kid, like what's so special about him? And then you had the fire element, Angelina Jolie backstory. It had a mush of everything coming together. Just like, like um, to me, I thought the movie was a lot different than it gives you that weird vibe because you're not really quite sure what this movie's about. Mm -hmm. You just know it has a kid, special agents, fire. And actually watching the film, I thought they did a couple of things that made it unique, that was very unique to this film. Is there anything that you liked about this movie? Well, when I first saw it, the whole time I thought it was going to be them crossing the fire and doing some like crazy moves in the fire. The kid is a reflection of the fire because the fire killed those other kids. This gives her a second chance of redemption saving this kid. So this time she's saving the kid that she couldn't say prior. So it's like a whole second chance of life. And this movie is interesting in a lot of ways that, you know, you have the dad, you know, the kid and the dad, their relationship I thought was kind of cool. Then they killed the dad. And one thing I thought about the two agents, especially the young one, I feel like they were trying to give him like this backstory, like, man, he doesn't want to kill anybody when he's seen the baby showers and stuff. He didn't seem like he was trying to be a bad guy, but he was doing bad things. So I feel like they tried to humanize him, but then he died in the worst way possible, right? Mm -hmm. And he was still doing bad things. So he, he there was no growth there. I thought at the end he was going to say, you know what, Angelina Jolie, I'm going to let you live. But no, he beats her head in and say, if you don't come here, little kid, I'm going to bash her in some more. So I felt like there wasn't no growth in his particular character. I thought, actually, this movie was unique to me in ways where the side characters were more important than like some of the main characters. The pregnant lady was the main character to a certain degree. She actually, there's like two main villains. She kills one of them and her husband's a sheriff and he couldn't do anything. He was just weak. He just died. He was the guy who played the Punisher. He didn't, he didn't do anything. Like, oh, he didn't like on the Punisher. You know that? Where? On Netflix. Oh, the TV show. Yes. Yeah, okay. i never seen the TV show. I was thinking the movie The Punisher with um, John Travolta and all of them people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was no. like, that's not him. <laughs> no, no, that's not him. That's a, that's another guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he plays The Punisher. I haven't seen his individual stand... Actually, you know what? I did. I think I've seen season one. I haven't seen season two of The Punisher. Mm. So it's a good show. Uh, he plays a well, good Punisher. I know him from Walking Dead, Shane. Yeah, he's, he's actually surprisingly doing a lot better than other ones, right? I feel like his character is the same in every movie. Even in this movie, he has that little crazy moment. Where but, like, he was in, but he was supposed to be a good guy in this one, out of all the ones that he's come out on. Yeah, he was a good guy. He was a good guy in this one. He was a good guy in The Punisher, too. Well, I haven't seen that one. What That's the only other one that he's a good guy. Yeah, but I feel like his character's the same. It's like the crazy guy. Come on, man, shoot me, man. Come on, man. Like, like, oh. like in the woods. Like he's like, I know you guys are gonna kill me anyway. So just do it, man. Do it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, his character. <laughs> yeah, it's like the same thing from like The Walking Dead. So there's like really no growth in his character from movie to movie. I expected a lot more. It's like uh, 
his wife. Now that was actually interesting, right? Like he had a pregnant wife. I, said, I was worried about her. I was worried about her. See, that's when your tears were coming out. And I thought, <laughs> why you gotta bring up my tears? <laughs> yeah, you said you didn't like this movie, but he had a tear coming out. The great thing, like one thing I thought was interesting was, like um, they showed the picture with him and his wife. Mm-hmm. And next thing you know, I didn't think his wife was gonna be this like this super badass. The uh, boss died instantly. Yeah, he, he was Head useless. Shot. Like that that whole that well, I guess that's what he get for not taking his wife's call, huh? Mm-hmm. You know, she's riding horses. I feel like she did all this stuff. You have to climb up like eighty stories to get to this place. The and stairs. There's no stairs. Yeah, they have the stairs. That's why she Angelina Jolie was going up there. But that's only partial at the top. Like halfway through, you have to climb up. Oh, with the rope? You can do that too, but there's like a climbing part at the bottom. Mm-hmm. And then there's like a portion of the stairs. But I feel like, you know, his character loved his wife so much that when she couldn't save his life, he's like, I can't move. She just stays there with him. Like, come on, man. Like, what type of love is that? You got a baby on the way and you're both going to just sit there in the fire and just hope it pass. So I thought that was kind of like um, lame. Like, he should at least lived at that point. And then the next, you know, yeah, he's dead. We don't need an ambulance right now. They, they say he's dead, but, like, they try to say he's not dead. It's like, oh, we're going to get an ambulance. Don't worry. Take your time. Is he dead or alive? Like, Why are you going to take your time? Meaning he's dead already, so. Pretty much. It's like, this but man. But I think they were getting the ambulance for her, not for him. No, nah, I think they were trying to get it for him at first. Because mm. he's like, you need an ambulance. The other guy who was checking um, the Punisher okay. guy. Angelina Jolie. I feel like this was a kind of like a real life, like just adopting the kids. So, you know, at the end of the movie, she's like, I thought the dialogue was kind of interesting too. Like, you know, every time she tried to have pity for herself, the kid is like, so basically we don't know the kid father gets killed in a movie. He just seen his father get killed. You got Angelina in her backstory, feeling sad for some kids that she didn't know that got, got killed. And her talking about, like you said, the fire. And she's trying to feel it's kind of sad. And he's like, yeah, my mom died of cancer and I watched her die too. And it's like, oh, well, I guess I can't feel bad for myself anyway. So one thing I'm starting to see, I feel like a lot of movies these days, they're not, they're not following like the traditional format. You know, like you have the hero throughout the movie. I feel like they're trying to make every, every character in a movie now have to mean something. Like even the sheriff, like did we really need the backstory of the sheriff not picking up the call, taking the call from his wife, you know? The guy didn't even do nothing in the movie. So I feel like they, even Tyler Perry, like he came in like a big shot for like one minute and that was it. It's like, you guys need to do this. And it's like, whoa, we wouldn't have been in this mess because of budget cuts. Well, it's too late now. So they didn't really do nothing extra. They had like the guys at the airport. They just had these two guys. They had like a whole squad, but no one else helped them out. This kid's going to expose everything, but... We don't know what he, what he exposed. Budget cuts. <laughs> budget Even cuts. Even the movie had a budget cut. <laughs> this movie had a budget cut on actors, so they said, you know what? We're, we only could afford two goons, and one of you guys is going to die by a pregnant woman, and the other one is going to burn alive by a kid and Angelina Jolie. So these hitman killers weren't that good. They got the B team. It's like, come on, Tyler Perry. You couldn't get like your A squad like on this. You had to get like your two low budget goons to take care of this stuff. They can't take care of a woman that was like six months pregnant, could barely move. She's up here <laughs> busting caps. But I feel like it was definitely one of those movies to kind of promote like the, the Midwest or, you know, kind of like, hey, you come over here, you're not going to make it. We carry guns over here. Yeah. Which, you know, it's cool because if she didn't have that gun, you know, she would have definitely died in this movie. Mm-hmm. But I kind of feel like it was kind of like one of those things where I thought they did a lot of unique things I thought was interesting. Uh, will I go to the movie and see it? No. Will I watch it on HBO Max? Absolutely. If you're not doing anything, you're paying for HBO Max, why not give it a shot? I think it's worth worth watching it, right? Mm-hmm. So, 1 through 10, what do you give this movie? 5. 5. Ooh, IMDb has it at 6. I'm going to give it a 6, too. I feel <laughs> like there was a lot of good elements in the movie. I like the, the pregnant lady. I like the fact that, you know, Angelina Jolie character was somewhat interesting. I did enjoy the little boy they were trying to kill, too. Um, outside of those characters, I thought Shane, or not his name, Shane, whatever his name is in this movie, uh, I thought his character was kind of weak. Like, they tried to give him some moments, but Angelina Jolie had a whole squad in the beginning. They're nowhere to be found except at the last, like, minute of the film. 
Even mm-hmm. in the film, like she's talking on a walkie-talkie to a friend. I was expecting somebody to betray them. Well, it, it was just like no communication, and they were by themselves. And they had to deal with it. Yeah, like I thought. Um, <laughs> yeah, I thought it was interesting. Like even like when you go back to the walkie-talkie, right? Mm-hmm. Like who's this guy that she's talking to on a walkie-talkie? I know it was one of her friends, but we never really see which friend it was. Mm. Maybe it was a guy at the end of the movie. But if you end up watching it, let us know in the comment section. Don't forget to like, subscribe, subscribe. and comment. Anything else you got to say? Stay tuned for the next one. We out. Peace. Peace.